This tutorial will discuss Maya's shelves. You will learn that while they are very useful features of Maya's GUI, they can be further optimized in a number of ways. I will take you through a series of procedures used to optimize your shelves and improve your workflow. This should help you get the most out of Maya's shelves and make sure you keep everything organized. I consider this to be an intermediate to advanced level tutorial. Intermediate in that nothing here is all that hard, but advanced because it will make use of some functionality that comes with Maya but with which most users are not at first aware. You will need an image editing application like Photoshop, Maya, and access to a command line like the DOS prompt on a PC, a terminal in Unix, or a terminal in the Mac OS. I use a Mac. Maya has its tools categorically arranged on tabbed shelves located at the top of the Maya GUI when it is in its default state. Users typically find some or all of these shelves to be useful as they provide quicker access to tools that would otherwise be embedded in several pull-down menus. For example, clicking on the Polygon Shelf tab located here gives one access to creating polygon primitives with one button click. Sphere, Torus, Pipe. Conversely, clicking on the Create Polygon Primitives, Prism, Cube tools will take somewhat longer in that the tool in question is found one or two items deep on a pull down menu. Typically, users often find that not all the tools they want are stored on the shelves, or that it would be better for their workflow if the tools were arranged slightly differently. Fortunately, Maya's shelves allow for a degree of flexibility. Tools can be added, created, and further modified to enhance clarity and organization. Let's create a simple example. Adding tools is a straightforward process. For example, tools like the Insert Loop tool can be selected from the pull-down menu. In this case, make sure you're in your polygon set. Search under Edit Mesh, Insert Edge Loop Tool. Their icon will show up on the left-hand toolbar, and then they can be used on any piece of polygonal geometry. A user can also middle mouse button click on the tool icon and drag it up to the shelf. Once added, shelf buttons can be rearranged so that their placement can more logically fit into a user's workflow. You can go into the shelf editor located just to the left of the shelves right here. Select the shelf button and move it up or down. Right now, I'll scroll down, select the Poly Select Edit tool, and I'll move it up and you'll see that there in the Shelf tab, it's moving to the left. Notice that in moving the Insert Edge Loop tool next to the Split Polygon tool, we are confronted with two identical icons. In a few moments, we will discuss how to change these in order to provide a clear distinction between the shelf buttons. For now, I'm simply going to save all shelves. Next, let us continue to discuss how to create custom shelf buttons from the MEL scripts. Next, let us continue to discuss how to create custom shelf buttons from MEL scripts. The model on the screen was brought into Maya from ZBrush, where it had displacement maps created. ZBrush's GoZ functionality brought the geometry and the displacement maps into Maya. But in the hypershade, seen here, we see that while the shading network looks clean, it is in fact difficult to use because several no nodes sit on top of one another. Since this will happen every time a ZBrush map is brought in, a quick shelf button that fixes the issue will be very advantageous. To create a custom button that cleans the graph, we must first 
Open the script editor, located down here on the right. Once opened, we will need to turn on history echo all commands. This will print out the syntax behind every button pushed, every tool invoked in Maya. However, first, let's right click and clear all. Next, go to history, type in echo all commands. Finally, back in the hypershade, select graph, rearrange graph. Then, in the script editor, turn off echo all commands by going to history and then unchecking echo all commands. In the script editor, highlight the text that was generated. Select an appropriate shelf, in this case, Go ZBrush. And then, middle mouse button, click and drag the syntax generated in the script editor up to the shelf. Let it go. Maya will now ask you, do you want to save this script as a Python or Mel script? Since we are working in Mel, Mel will be fine. The button is now created. Now, if ever a graph is somehow tangled, this simple Mel button will untangle it just by pressing it. The mail button, however, is unlabeled, and as more such buttons are added, confusion could ensue as to which button performs which function. To get around this, open the shelf editor and assign a label to the button, like so. Select the button, and under icon name, give it a name. In this case, I will use GRPH to indicate a graph. Click Save All Shelves. Now, your mail button is labeled and will hopefully be clear to you in the future. An additional way to clarify a button's function is to create a custom icon for it. The Maya documentation states that an icon must be a 32 by 32 pixel image. It can only be a BMP or an XPM. Unfortunately, BMP files are supposed to only work on Windows machines. Even so, it seems they only work inconsistently. XPM files, however, work on any platform but are not easily created as most graphics programs do not save to XPM format. Such is certainly the case with Photoshop. To get around this issue, a small utility that ships with Maya will be used to change the image format. It is called IMGCVT, which stands for Image Convert. And as the documentation states, the Image Convert utility converts images or sequences of images from one image file format to another. To use this, we must first open our image editor. Here I've opened Photoshop and I've already created a 32 by 32 bit file. Now you'll have to create your image. I've already done so and I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to flatten my image down. And now you need to save it off like a typical file, in this case like a JPEG. Save as. I'll path it to a specific folder called Icons New and I will call this Graph Fix. G -R -A -P -H fix.jpg. Remember to save it as a JPEG format and click Save. Next, to convert it to an XPM, we will need to use the Image Convert or IMG CVT small utility. Maya's documentation describes the Image CVT, but it implies that Image Convert cannot create an XPM since it is not listed in the possible file formats. This will be shown to be an error. Similarly, the documentation neglects to mention a few things about how to implement IMG CVT. I will supplement those materials now. 
You must open a Maya terminal. A regular terminal on the Mac will not be able to do the IMG CVT. Go to Applications, Autodesk, Maya 2009, and launch the Maya terminal. To make sure it is working and that you have the right terminal, type IMG CVT dash H. In this case, dash H stands for help. Notice the list that follows detailing how the utility works. Also, notice XPM is listed. You are in the right terminal. Now, you'll need to navigate to the directory where the images lives. This can be tricky. You may need to back out of several folders. Moving up one directory level is accomplished by typing in cd, which stands for change directory, space, dot, dot, slash. When you are at your root, path out the directory to where the icon image was saved. In my case, it can be found under my hard drive, applications, Autodesk, Maya 2009, Icons New. Icons New is a folder that I created on my own inside the Maya 2009 folder because I think it's a convenient place to put things. I'll now change to that directory. So I will say CD applications slash Autodesk slash Maya 2009 slash icons new. Spelling is important here. The syntax needed to do the image convert is as follows. IMG CVT dash F. F stands for from JPG because the graph fix JPEG I saved was a JPEG dash T to XPM because that's the file format I want to go out to. Graph fix dot JPEG. It's important that you keep the file extension. Graph fix dot XPM. That's the file format I want to go to. Hit enter. Nothing should happen except that you get a new command line. But back in the window, that shows the directory where your images are stored, a new graphfix.xpm should have been created. That's all you need. You now have a working icon for Maya. Back in Maya, open the shelf editor and select the tool. Shelf editor, here's my graph tool. I'll actually delete the grph because I'm going to just replace it with an icon and that'll be enough. Change image, icons new, Select the XPM, open, save all shelves. This will hopefully allow you to manage your tools and organize your workflow and increase productivity with Maya shelves. One last thing I want to do, remember that back in polygons, we put the insert edge loop tool right next to the split polygon tool and their icons are the same. Let's fix those by changing the insert edge loop tools icon so that from now on when we see it we're not confused by the two. Again, I'll open the shelf editor. I will select my poly select edit cut and I'll change the image. I've pre-created an icon found once again under Autodesk Maya 2009 icons new and here I have insert loop XPM. And now I'll save my shelves. And now my icons are no longer confusing. As you can see, this will help bring a logical organization and a clarity to your Maya shelves that will hopefully allow you to work faster and smarter. Thanks for watching. For Creative Cow, I'm Aharon Charnov.